Okay. So here we see the leading actor and actress of the latest James Bond movie. Show of hands, gentlemen, how many of you wouldn't mind taking a day out of the office to escort this lovely lady down the red carpet at the premiere? <laughs> and ladies, how many of you wouldn't mind doing the same with Daniel Craig? Great. Well, if you were an employee at TBG Capital, one of the biggest investors at MGM Film Productions, you would have this opportunity. That gentleman there with her is actually one of the partners within the London office. Today I'm going to take you through a little bit about TBG Capital. We're going to start with who they are and then the four C's of TPG. The contact, the controversy, the contributions, and finally, the career opportunities of TPG Capital. A little bit about TPG. They are a private equity firm that has over $47 billion under management. They're focused on leverage buyouts and they're located globally. They have an office in San Francisco, which is where I was previously employed, as well as Hong Kong and Tokyo, just to name a few. So now that you know a little bit about TPG, you're probably wondering, why should I care? That leads us to the first C, the contact that you have already had with TPG in your first week alone here at Fuqua. If you have been in this class, which we all have, we saw the film on the Harris video. TPG was mentioned in that as one of the investors, as well as their actual brand of TPG. Anybody in economics? We looked at the Burger King article. TPG, again, that falls under their portfolio companies. And if you were close enough to read, you would see that that article was actually discussing TPG's exit from that investment. So twice here, in your first week alone at Fuqua, you've had contact with TPG without even realizing it. Other ways, they are also investors in Neiman Marcus, as well as Petco and Lenovo, just to name a few. So understanding the contact that you've had with TPG, maybe without even realizing it, brings me to maybe the controversies of TPG that you have maybe encountered as well. An example, this last year, TPG was accused of owing an extra $452 million, a lot of money, to the Australian government. They were claiming that they had used a tax loophole to go ahead and get out of paying that money. TPG was cleared, the charges were dropped, but this is just an example of some of the controversy that faces a high-profile firm such as TPG when you're as profitable as you are. In contrast to the controversies, we have the contributions. The third C, how does TPG give back? Very interesting as a grad student, I found that one of our founding partners, David Bonderman, he does the Bonderman Fellowship. This is where he sponsors certain grad students to travel abroad. They're not to do any work exchange, no school exchange. It is simply a time meant for self-reflection and gaining cultural awareness. Knowing now how TPG gives back, Maybe you're interested in how can I become a part of TPG. That brings us to my fourth C, the career opportunities. They have both internships available for MBAs as well as full-time positions. You're not going to find TPG recruiting here on campus, but I have provided the contact information for the head recruiter and encourage you to reach out to her. If you are hired full-time by TPG, one of the things very similar to FUQA, in March we'll have an orientation weekend where you travel to San Francisco, you do team building activities. Every year there is a annual go-kart racing, which is a lot of fun. And then you start full-time in August. Your last week in August will be a training week where they give you all the tools that you will need to be able to succeed at TPG. In conclusion, Understand what I want you to walk away with is that you have already had contact with TPG. Whether you realize it or not, a lot of their brands play into your day in, day out life. There are controversies that you may face being an employee of TPG or that you may have just heard in the news. Contributions of TPG are significant. They give back not only to community as a whole, but directly to us grad students. And finally, there are job opportunities. <laughs> you could someday be the person walking down the red carpet with a movie star to the premiere. Thank you very much. What can we say about this one? Yeah. After this picture, she was uh, <laughs> a say, say a nice one. After she used this picture, my picture over there, I'm going to give her a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Taylor, right? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, I, I really liked your uh, your posture. I mean, your eye contact was really sustained. Uh, your voice inflection was great. I think, I mean, your introduction was uh, really, uh, it was funny, and I mean, it was catchy in, in that sense, but I felt that you could relate more to uh, what we are listening. I mean, I was uh, hoping to hear the, all, all these out career opportunities, and maybe if you related more to that, I'll be, it would be better. Okay, other things?
Yes. I thought it was very relatable to us in several ways um, with the ending, but also with how you brought up what we learned in class. Um, and I also enjoyed the signpost of the four C's. It was very easy to follow, and I actually like having it up top. Yeah, up top is better than down bottom mm -hmm. in this room. So that's that's one way to take care of it. Other things? Yes. Um, I thought uh, I actually liked the intro. I thought it did connect well in terms of what what uh, TV tries to do. Uh, so I actually uh, did. Try. I like the the end of it, especially with concluded um, talking about that. Uh, the one of the key things I saw was it was really fast. Um, I had a tough time keeping with, keeping up with you and with the fly transitions. I just uh, was struggling a bit. And um, the other thing was maybe I missed it, but I didn't see an agenda. Maybe I just missed it. Was yeah. there, there was an agenda, but it was the C's. Okay. Okay. So I think the idea was there was it was it was great that you did it that way, and I think it worked real well to have the map. I really would like a little more of the logic of why those if because you have a list with C's. <laughs> You maybe need to sell me a little bit more on why the order is what it is, or, or you know, tell me about what you're achieving with each of them just slightly. So you pause. Now I do agree that you went really quickly. You were only at you when you were you were summarized completely, and you had your last slide up there pretty much at before four minutes. So yeah. for for whatever reason, you know, you were really quick. Now you may have had too much content in the first one and, and maybe overcorrected. When you overcorrected, you probably overcorrected in ways that, that hurt you in terms of the career stuff that the thing he was telling you about. That may have been more sexy to put in there and, uh, and better for connecting with the audience. But I, do, I did like the idea of having that connection and having it almost be surreptitious. He didn't, people didn't even know that they got connected you know, when they did. Uh, you're, I will say that you did stand nice and, nice and still and you did have pretty good eye contact, but you motored in lots of ways. You were, you, it sounded rushed. And especially if I took my eyes off you and just was writing and listening to you, it sounded like you were you were worried about getting through it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You were trying to go too fast. So that's one thing. I don't know whether that's a, that I, it, it may just be a function of this speech. All right. So that's I think what, what what you have to decide is is this something that happens when you do presentations or is it something that happens when you try to fit this amount of material into into five minutes? Um, I think the the key takeaways and the opportunity to transition is not being used sufficiently by you guys. This is time to change that. If you want to rush in the content, but then nail and stop and gesture, gesture a little bit more emphatically, that's a good time to collect us, get a, let us take a breath, let you take a breath and get going to the next thing. Make a more explicit connections between things would probably be helpful. You also could benefit from larger gestures. Okay. If you gesture more emphatically, your voice will, will, will ch change and it'll slow down, typically. And that's really the only thing. Sometimes people can actually sustain an incredible rate. You had almost no ver verbal fillers. So it wasn't as if you were, had to stop because of that. And so once you don't have a, a red light in that situation, there's no reason to stop. You, know, you just keep going. And I think to some extent, we need to catch up to you, even if we're hearing it all, are we digesting it all and putting it into the kind of logic that we need? Okay, that's the major thing. All right, I did like your, your, uh, your opening. You know, once in a while you have to think in terms of some of the guys would like to be with Daniel Craig and some of the women, but you don't want to necessarily make that into a big, you know, <laughs> sh show of hands type thing. But there once in a while, there are people who, are, who have different, different needs. Okay, thank you very much.